But yeah, cool. Thank you very much for coming down. Appreciate no, 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 no. it. Um, I remember when I first met you, the first thing I noticed obviously was your beard. And then obviously <laughs> since then, I've uh, followed the page and yeah. I've just heard you say you only started it in July and That's it's right. already, I think, just over 10,000 followers. But I guess to start off from the beginnings, uh, what is Beard Culture London for those who don't know? Right, so Beard Culture London's an online hub yeah. uh, for the, I suppose, the urban male. It's a community that we, we, we set up to inspire, um, basically give, provide tips and the opportunities for men to have a safe space to discuss all things about looking good, smelling good. Yeah. Really. So that's, that, that was the kind of ethos behind it and what kind of fused us to, to set it up. 100%. I feel like it's, it's, a, it's way more than just being about beards. And I think Absolutely. there's so many ways in which men, especially men of colour, can connect with each other. And I feel like this is a great conduit for that. But yeah. was that something you planned or something you saw doing whilst you were setting up? Well, for me, um, I've always, I've spent years in barbershops. Yeah. You know, trying to get the perfect fade, the best marker. And what I found is within my, I suppose, social, social networks, um, guys would rarely compliment each other. Mm. Or say, oh, my brother, where'd you get your hair done? Or mm. what'd you use in your beard? And I found that um, women used to t tend to do it often. You know, they compliment nails, hair, skin. Clothing. Total stranger. And they'll Absolutely. just compliment straight away. But where I grew up and the communities I, um, I, I suppose I network in, that was almost a bit of a taboo. And it was only until you broke down a bit of a barrier and got comfortable with somebody mm. where that would tend to be the case. So I, th I thought, okay, let me create something online. Because everybody has a, an additional sense of kind of courage behind a keyboard or online yeah, that's and true. setting up a community where people could actually feel free to express their, I suppose, share good practice, mm -hmm. express um, any concerns, ask any questions. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, the, the, the beauty about the space was, it was more, to, as you said rightfully, mm. more to do than just beards and hair. 100%. It became a space where people would actually DM about how they're feeling. I was going to ask about that. What, you, what's, yeah. what sort of DMs are you getting at the moment? All right. So from <laughs> somebody saying that they feel um, depressed. Wow. Which is the, the, the reality of the page. You're getting guys mm. that are actually saying, listen, I appreciate the page. I love the positive vibes. Mm. I just don't really know how to express myself. Or mm. I feel rather anxious. Or, you know, have you got any network or anywhere that you feel you could channel me towards where I could actually get some help. Mm. I've spoken to some really deep brothers mm. that are going through some stuff mm -hmm. and being able to connect them with other people that I know in the networks that are actually out there doing positive things and making change. Yeah. At the same time, on the flip side, some of the DMs I get, I'll get a guy from, let's say, deep Senegal that's wow. sending me a picture of his face saying, my brother, yeah. <laughs> I have patches. Or what do I do? And I'm yeah, sitting there yeah. thinking, hang on a minute. It, it, you're asking me like the, the beard guru. Yeah, literally. And it's, it's amazing because I've gone through an, my own journey with mm -hmm. my own facial hair and with the hair growth, skin care and all the rest. So yeah. being able to share my knowledge mm -hmm. and share knowledge that I've picked up along the way has been inspiring for me, but also I've seen it's actually been able to help others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's... And as, as far as your personal journey, like, mm. what, was, what was yours and how, you, how can you relate to other people who send you those DMs? Did you sort of come out of the womb with a full beard like when, <laughs> when, when, like when did no, it I when, wish, I wish it when, when, when did it start because everyone's got their own different points at which they actually start yeah. to grow hair but what, what's your personal journey so on I that? remember being back in like year year 10 at school yeah and this is when um, Craig David yeah, was yeah, yeah. flying so I had the little chin strap you know that, oh, you no. know, that sweet boy kind of look yeah, yeah. Um, you know I'd, I'd go and get that what was it sporting wave or esco and yeah, try and yeah, curl yeah. up my hair so I always, I suppose it was growing up in a house with my sister. I always liked to look good and presentable. And my family did as well. Yeah. So I'd always want to make sure that my, I was very well presented. Mm -hmm. Uniform was smart. And my appearance was clean. Yeah. yeah. Um, and growing facial hair was never something that I desired to do. Mm -hmm. But I always just found that I was able to do it. And it was navigating through the whole shaving experience, uh, you know, late teens, early 20s. Yeah. And realizing how expensive razors were mm -hmm. and what an art it actually is and then appreciating what the barber does and i thought to myself okay let me just see what i can grow myself um what resonates uh with me for a lot of the conversations i have in the dms yeah is i struggled to grow facial hair at the sides i yeah. had some serious patches yeah and it was my own personal journey as to how do i overcome that mm -hmm. one with confidence mm -hmm. um i act with confidence but i'm quite an introverted person 
and quite a, a closed person when it comes to family life and everything else. Would you say the facial hair has made you more confident as an honest as an honest answer? It has done. Yeah. Um, and it's put, this platform has most definitely seen another side to me that I never thought I had. Others saw it. But I was never one for social media. I was never one to put myself out there. That's interesting. So to actually go behind the camera and start washing my beard or applying yeah. oil and talking about how to comb it. That's not naturally <laughs> you. Oh, listen, it's out, totally out of a comfort zone yeah. for myself. But. How, how do you balance, I guess, uh, being thrusted into the limelight now mm. with your sort of day-to-day -day duties and your day-to-day -day responsibilities as a, as a deputy head teacher? That's an interesting one. Yeah. It's, it's something that, has, I suppose, that has always been one of the, the barriers that I've had to overcome mm. to prevent me from going out online because... Um, as deputy I teach, I have roles and responsibilities and a position that I take, that I pride myself in. Mm -hmm. I take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that the content I put out is something that's positive, mm -hmm. um, has no negative connotations, is only going to benefit anybody, or I believe benefit anybody that's going to access it. Um, and nothing's going to be controversial or compromise my position mm -hmm. as a teacher. Um, it's a vocation that I chose. It's something mm -hmm. that I hold dear to my heart. One hundred percent. So, what age groups are you are you teaching at the moment? So I'm eleven to eighteen, second. Okay, because yeah. that right there, I think it's quite a nice sort of uh, partnership then, because that's yeah. really the age where people start to come into their manhood. I think one of my um, mottos at school, the school yeah. motto was from boy to man, and yeah, that yeah, really yeah. is where you start to discover. Okay. You know, you, you you go from adolescence all the way into manhood and whatnot. So I think it works quite well. It does. I mean, yeah. I don't cross them over. So I won't okay. go into school. And there are many people at my school, I believe, don't know about it. Okay. But I, I, I know that there are hundreds of the students that have either seen a video yeah. or something's been circulated around. But I, I'm, I'm okay with that because yeah. there's nothing negative. And also, Beer Culture London and Men's Grooming is outside of the spectrum that would be within the framework of um, children and education in the mm -hmm. sense of that age range. So there's nothing that could compromise me professionally either. Got you. And that's important for myself. Sure. I, I guess there's similarities in, as far as giving tips and giving guidance, because that's, yeah. I guess, what you'll do at school, yeah. and that's what you're doing through the platform Absolutely. as well. Yeah. So as far as uh, people who do send you the DMs as well, mm. what would you say is the most common question that people ask you? <laughs> I'm just so curious to know. How do I grow a beard? How what do you grow can, a beard full what stop? What can you send me? <laughs> <laughs> what product is out there yeah. that is going to make my... Because you do a lot of product reviews as well, true, don't you? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, I mean, how much of it is genetic? That's that's my big question because I feel like there's people out there who will just say, "Oh, use this beard oil and you're gonna have a full beard." And uh, such, there are so many people time. out there that yeah. put out all spurious claims. For me, it's um, ge genetics does play play a role. At the same time, hair growth, healthy hair growth, starts from within. So whatever you put into your body is going to come out. So having a good balanced diet. If you're on drunk food and drinking alcohol all the time, you're not exercising, how do you expect anything that's coming out of your body to be, to be healthy? At mm -hmm. the same time, what you put on your skin has an effect. Skin's the biggest organ in our body. Mm. People fail to remember that. It's true, actually. Everyone's so conscious about, oh, if I drink this fizzy drink, the amount of sugar, and we, we look at the contents of what we're consuming. Yeah. But at the same time, when was the last time people were actually stopped and read the label for the things they're putting on their face and skin? I, I've never done that. This is it. I can't remember the last time I did that. So it's yeah. opening up there. I suppose it's educating the masses to say, listen, make an informed choice about what you're putting on. Is it going to block up your pores? Is it going to damage your hair? Mm -hmm. um, the things you're consuming, are, are you drinking off water? Are you drinking off foods that contain things like vitamin A, vitamin E, biotin? Mm. Um, and not overloading on that, having a nice balance. You know? mm -hmm. And I mean, you, it's, all, it's all very well and good doing those things. Yeah. But I mean, would you say someone with great genetics doesn't need to necessarily have to worry about all of that? Or no, you would still, you say it's also very still important? I think it's still very okay. important, yeah. Because great great genes, you know, some people just naturally yeah. can grow hair and are very hairy. Yeah. But at the same time, it's the quality of the hair growth. Sure, you sure. Know? Um, of course. You, nobody wants to have that brittle hair with the split ends and wiry, scraggly hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do have it, it's how you man manage it and maintain it. And it will only grow to a certain length. Yeah, of course. You know, so. Of yeah. course. So obviously the platform's grown massively now. I, yeah. I've been asking the question to a few people, but surely is, is it on your mind that you want to try and do your own products? Is that a question you've been asked a few times before? Or? I can only answer this honestly. I, yeah. I would love to. Yeah. At the same time, it's, I, I'm still on my own journey to navigate to experience what is the best things for my hair mm. for, and for me personally. Got you. Um, to then provide something for the masses, mm -hmm. um, conduct my own due diligence around the products that are out there is important. But then doing it correctly, 
Mm. Anything I do and put my mind to, I want to do properly to, to the highest level. I could quite easily now go into my kitchen and mix up a few oils and yeah. say, hey, here's my beard up. Yeah, Check yeah. it out. But at the same time, I want to make sure it's done right. And I've got a lot of people that have actually approached me and said, look, mm -hmm. I'd like to invest or this is the avenue we'd like to explore. We'd like to have you on board. We'd like to be the face of it. Um, right now, there's a lot of options and I'm taking my time. Of course, of you course. Because you forget time. it's only been since July. We're not even a full year July yet. July 24th. And the traction's been crazy already. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as far as uh, working with other people, influencers yeah. or other brands and things along those lines, yeah. what's the plan to sort of forge more partnerships with events or things along those lines? What have you got coming up? Well, this is it. I'm looking at um, multiple events that people are asking me on. Yeah. I love being able to get out and speak about men's grooming and just show guys, especially guys like myself and from communities where I'm from, yeah. it's all right to talk about our appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's just connect and vibe because you never know what gem or nugget of information might be shared. So getting out and uh, you know being more vocal about men's grooming, enabling all ranges of men to actually embrace that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the future for me, hey, beard products, yeah. beard range it for, for, for ourselves, you never know. But it's got to come at the right time and with the right people if I'm going to collaborate and connect. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm all about positive vibes. Yeah. To so anybody that's doing anything on a positive vibe, even if it's unrelated to beards or men's grooming. I get you. I'm here to You're support. happy to partner yeah, with. Absolutely. And the reason I bring it up, because I think I saw something uh, with Terrell, Terrell Lewis, who was yeah. on your page the other yeah. day as well. And I think he's got his own, his own platform. I that's saw right. there could definitely be some synergy there as well. Yeah, well, it's interesting enough. Terrell only recently started following as well. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, the other day. Yeah. You know, I've connected, I, I connected with, I believe it's his brother, who um, they run the Man Talk. Oh, that's the one I was referring to, yeah. Yeah, now yeah. the Man Talk for me, uh, I'm passionate about what they do because it's just giving a space for mm. men to come out and just be open, be free mm. and, you know, support one another. So, yeah. yeah, the collaboration with what, Ever they're doing, I would love to be part of what yeah. they're doing down in South London in terms of things like Brixton Street. Yeah, the street you're obviously as well. It's incredible, and I wish North London caught yeah. to something <laughs> in that because I'd love to be there. Yeah, yeah. I, I've always felt there's not as much cohesion, especially within you know, sort of men of colour within our community. Yeah. It's always very yeah. much yeah. quite close minded. We don't feel like we can talk to each other, mm -hmm. and those feelings exist. Mm -hmm. We can't deny that, but we don't really talk to them as much as other communities do. So yeah. I feel like platforms like yours or Man Talk are definitely helping break down break down those barriers. Most definitely, and those things are really important for me because yeah. we, I can't be successful without the help of, of others. Yeah, and at the same time, I want to contribute my positivity and my vibes yeah. to the journey of other people with a similar mindset. Yeah, and if we can do that collaboratively, number one, the, the pie is big enough for everybody to eat. Yeah, at the yeah. same time, why can't we lift up one another? You know, it costs mm -hmm. absolutely nothing yeah. to uplift someone else. You know, a hundred percent. So I, I've got to ask about my personal story as well. Yeah. I feel like um, we haven't talked about women just yet, but <laughs> ever, literally ever since, ever since I grew, so, I'm not, my facial hair, in my opinion, is terrible. Nah, man, ever, good growth. Ever, ever since I grew facial hair, I've definitely had more attention from from women as well. But okay. have you, what, what's the sort of traction you've had from women looking at the page as well? It's definitely a question you have to ask. All right, so six <laughs> percent of my following is actually female. Six, six percent. That's interesting. Ninety-four percent is men. I would have thought it would have been a little bit higher female, personally. It's, I would have thought it would have Yeah. It, hey, it's interesting because, yeah, yeah. A lot, you know, there's a stereotype out there that women love a bearded man. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, my, my wife in particular, Yeah, she did not want me to grow a beard. That's interesting. She, I mean, and it was just before, so we had a, we had a deal, if I'm yeah. a big Tottenham Hotspur fan. Yeah. If Tottenham won the Champions League, yeah. I had to shave my beard off. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> if they won it if they won it wow and they lost so here we are wow yeah it's yeah, incredible yeah. and I, I you, would you have actually done that by the way Hell like... no <laughs> <laughs> I was like, gonna say I like to keep peace in my house yeah you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean so I'll, I'll, you know but at, listen it was one of those things where she was like no I don't like it it's too long yeah even now she'll complain yeah but um yeah you, you get attention the way I see it clean shaven men are gonna get attention yeah men with stubble wiry, full beards. Hey, yeah. if it's a preference, people are going to like it. People are going to like it either way. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. So I guess to finish on, as far as uh, sort of your three top tips that you would yeah. give anyone who's just starting out, they've never looked after their facial hair, yeah. what three things should they sort of do first and foremost? First and foremost, be patient. This race patient. is not going okay. to swift. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, own what you can grow. Okay. So if it is a patchy beard you have, if it's... Um, only a goatee, if you can grow a full beard, own it and wear it with confidence. There's no blueprints for anyone to say, this is the type of beard you should have. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have, shape it, own it and be proud of it. 
Um, at the same time, manage your diet, mm -hmm. be conscious of what you put into your body, and be conscious of what you put onto your skin and onto the, the hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't don't be to use a, a young man's term, don't be gassed on what the claims are from various products. I got so you. I got, you. Free tips, man. got you, man. Perfect. Yeah. Definitely. Um, um, what's the future holding for you at the moment? What's the sort of next on the roadmap for so, what's coming up? Just so uh, the listeners can know. So for what's coming up, we're gonna continue to grow our following. Okay. Um we're gonna continue to try and collaborate with various uh, brands of similar mindset with uh, spreading positive vibes and spreading a message out there. Yeah. And we're open to collaborate with any other uh, men's grooming products that want a platform Dope. to showcase because I think it's important to have that. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, investigate and navigate what we f can further bring out mm -hmm. to to support our, our, our community and our followers, really. So Love that's that. in the range of, a, in, 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 in the mindset of a product range. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what can happen? Who knows what can happen? Love it. And where can they follow you at the moment? So it's at Beer Culture London. We're yeah. on Instagram. Um, yeah. Come along, show love, drop an, an emoji, yeah, yeah, yeah. share with your friends, slide in the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love it, man. I appreciate it.